Hi, Eric here with 30 by 40 Design Workshop. Today I want to do a quick tutorial on how I generate these basic rendered site plans uh, without a lot of effort. This took about 10 or 15 minutes to make uh, and I have a template that I can use and plug in my other design schemes for this. So I'll walk you through the sort of methodology that I've used here. You're going to start off with your basic um, title block and this particular one is 11 by 17 and I have a little frame here that the line work fits within. So you'll generate your title block and you'll leave room probably for um, a description, a text description of what the scheme is. And then um, inside this frame you'll bring your line work in and you will position it so, um, so it looks right on the screen. So that's our basic starting template. Now what I want to do to get the background here to keep it really abstract um, was I wanted to find a generic image. And so I found this image of kind of fur online. And um, when you find a, a texture that you really like, and it could, be, um, it could be something like this as well, something really kind of abstract, um, you can modify the color of that if, if it's not, if the texture is right, but the color isn't, um, by placing a, an overlay on that. So you do a color adjustment layer there. And then just what I do is just kind of tweak the opacity of that. And then you end up with a, a color and a pattern that is suitable for a sort of grass background. This particular site is in a field, um, so I kind of like that. It was abstract enough, but it also uh, sort of referenced grass. Okay, so we'll get rid of these textures now, but you can use anything. Um, so let's take our altered grass texture here, and you're gonna basically drag it in to use it as the background on this. Let's make sure our guides are on here. And we're gonna transform this layer to fit within the frame that we've created. Let's try that again. Okay. It doesn't have to be precise because I'll show you what we're gonna do. We'll get it close. You can see our guides are here. And then we'll select the frame that we're fitting our imagery into. And then we're just going to apply a layer mask. That's this button right here. And that'll clip it to the frame. Now you have to move it around to make sure that it's sort of behind all the other things that you're aligning on the page. And that'll go right here. Okay. And we'll give it a sensible layer name. Grass background. Okay, Okay. so we have our line work in here. It's on our grass background. Now what I want to do is I wanted to make this inverted. I think it's going to read better on this darker background. So all you do is make sure you have the layer selected and make sure it's not the layer mask that's selected, but the layer itself. And you're going to come up here to image adjustments and you're going to invert it. And so that gives us our, our line work there. And this is where the basic technique of layering on these sort of washes of color comes in. And what I like to do is establish a color palette beforehand, and this is just a kind of a generic one that you can um, pick from and set your colors here along the way. So I've got two colors that I can use here, and I'll come back to this frame. And if you want to separate out your line work into separate layers, which I do recommend, this is a real, this is a very simple site diagram, so it's not totally necessary. Um, but you can come on um, the line work layer and start selecting areas that you want to create this fill in. Um, if you had selected it, if it's a really complex drawing um, and you export really simple shapes like these simple rectangles or circles, things like that, it's easy to come in with the magic wand on the line work layer and select the areas that you want to fill. Okay, once we have our areas selected, you're going to come and create a new layer and we're going to call this building fill. And on that layer, it's going to be a solid color. And so we'll choose our color from our foreground, from our predetermined color palette. And there you have your, your building fill there. Now you can see I wasn't as precise as I probably should have been. Um, but on this other layer, I have it here. So one of the things you can do now is start adjusting the opacity on that layer. So it can be more or less present on the site. And I kind of like this washed out look. Um, the 
I think the final image uses about a 75% opacity. So roughly there, you get the sense of the sort of buildings as they relate to the site. Now you're gonna go ahead and do this for anything else you wanna diagram on the, on the site model here, on the overhead view. And it might be circulation patterns, things like that. You'll come, you'll create a new color adjustment layer. We're gonna select from, from this for our circulation. And you'll see you can start creating these layers. Again, change the opacity on that. And you can suggest uh, different layers of movement and, and subtle things here. Let's say we want to highlight this garden area as a destination point. Again, we'll come over here, create a color adjustment layer. And this could be from another, uh, another color in our palette. And you can really play with what kind of wash effect you get on here. Okay, so once we've established those things, um, we'll come back to this diagram. Then you're going to start layering on your driveway information, and then we'll do the shadows. So I'll show you how I do the driveway. The driveway is basically, um, it's hard to see in the line work here, but the driveway is exported, uh, an exported hatch fill from my CAD program. And so I just bring it in to this program here. I sort of, again, change the opacity of it. Let's get on the driveway layer. So you can see that's the hatch piece. I'll line it up with the existing diagram here. And anything, anytime when you bring sort of hatch fill in here and it's not quite the right size, all we're going to do is come and select our guidelines like this. And you're going to apply a layer mask to it and that clips it to that frame. Again, on this, I had a solid black. If it's completely opaque, it was solid black. Um, and I changed it to about 40% to give me sort of what I was looking for. If it's a really subtle kind of dirt road or path in a field, you can go down to 10% and just really give a light suggestion of, uh, of where the, the drive is. Okay, so that fills in that information. Next thing I was going to show you is the shadows. Now you can come on um, a layer. If you take the building fill layer and you actually... Um, you rasterize it, you turn it into an image. You can do a drop shadow on this um, under the layer modes, but I don't recommend that because it's sort of just a floating, a hovering shadow look. So what I recommend is just doing a basic plot of what the shadows look like um, for your project. And if you throw it in SketchUp and look at what the basic shadow pattern might be, um, you'll get something that you can work with. And what you're going to do is you're going to, again, use this color, solid color adjustment layer, make it black. And you see I wasn't entirely careful there, but um, you'll apply that color and then you'll, you'll use your opacity um, to start adding the building shadows here. And you can see on this other layer, I've been more careful about getting those properly to suggest a gable here and a gable here on this piece. So that really starts to give some depth to this. Uh, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to come over and you're going to start layering on text information. And um, probably don't have to show you how to do that. We're going to call this the main house. Make sure the color is correct. For this, should be probably a black color. It's kind of what I use. That's a little small. You'll adjust your height to make sense for your project. Get everything situated. Kind of move it around. Center it on anything you want to indicate. Um, so we have that. We're starting to layer on that information. Uh, the next thing I'll show you is um, to get the arrows in there. Whatever shape you'd like to use. Um, I'll just use this arrow shape here as an example. And we'll come back to our color palette and we'll select the orange because I like that. And this ensures that um, we can match the colors between the different um, site plans that we're using. We'll come and place an arrow. We'll show where the entry is here. And again, I like to use the similar sort of wash technique and you can um, change the opacity to get that desired effect there. So that's how we add our shapes here. And we talked about adding some of our scheme naming conventions here. 
another technique that you can start to really um, sh indicate trees, individual trees or tree lines or edges um, is to come up to your brush here. You're going to create a new layer and we'll come find, find a suitable uh, patterned brush. I like using kind of these little spongy looking things. Um, make sure the size is right for, for what you're trying to do here. And we'll select from our color palette. We'll select a color that we like. And you can do this with other site plans that you found online. Something that, that you like. Let's go a little darker on that one. Um, we'll come back to this. And we're going to use our brush. We're on our new layer, tree shading layer. Whichever direction the sun's coming from, lower right hand corner, we'll, we'll make it sort of darker on this edge here. And you can do this with the individual. You can change the opacity on that. Individual trees, however you like. But you get the idea. Um, and I would probably actually even go darker on that. You can start filling these things in. Change the brush size if you like. Try and keep it rough. I mean, it should be pretty painterly in the end. So you can do that. Um, if you have big tree lines, you can do fills and use the same sort of techniques that we talked about earlier, um, creating these areas, color, solid color, fill adjustments. You can come and and work it, work with it like that. So same techniques as you would use on the building. Last thing I wanted to show you is how to get this sort of vignette effect. And this is a pretty simple uh, thing to do. You're going to come to your um, elliptical marquee tool and you'll select an area of the building that you're interested in highlighting. And let's just say it's that. Kind of center it. Then come up to your selection tool here and you're going to modify the selection. You're going to feather it and I'm using just 100 pixels. So we do that and it looks like it didn't change much, but it did feather this edge here and you'll see um, that it helped. it's going to help create that effect. It's now not a solid um, well-defined edge. It's, it's a sort of gradient edge. Okay. So from this point, you're you want to select the inverse, which is going to select the outside of this layer here. And then we're going to come here and we're going to add a levels adjustment. And you'll see what happens once we start adjusting this level. And you can really make this, you know, quite dramatic if you want to just highlight one particular area. Um, and you can play with that to, to suit your taste. So that creates the vignette effect. And what I like about that is it kind of gives some extra depth and it highlights the center portion here, the area that you're really trying to get the, your client to focus on. So that's a quick down and dirty kind of painterly tutorial on how I, what I've been using lately to generate my site plans. Um, I hope it was helpful.